He says, وَلَا يَزْنُونَ And they don't commit zina. They don't have boyfriends and girlfriends. They don't have secret relationships. Why did he mention that? Because for some people, it's always there. He's a good-looking young guy. He walks around in the mall and the girl looks at him and goes, hee-hee. <laughs> and he's like, oh, this is easy. You know, nobody's watching. I think it's okay. Should be alright. And he stops himself. He still stops. It's hard. I know it's hard, guys. I know. It's hard. But you stop yourself. The girl thinks that guy's looking at me. Man, he must think I'm really pretty. And she starts smiling. She stops herself. No, this is wrong. I can't do this. This is not right. Just because my parents aren't watching. Just because the police isn't here to stop me. Doesn't mean it's okay. Walaya is known. They don't do it. They don't behave like that. There are young men in, like when I, where I come from in the US, obviously, you know, kids go to college, and college in the summer is bad. You know, it's bad. And you have an 18, 19 year old boy whose hormones are raging inside of him. And then there's like, in his college classroom, there's girls sitting that are barely dressed. And this girl comes over to him and says, Hey, can you help me with the homework? And he's being tested by Allah. He's being tested. You guys are going to be tested. That's not just in America, by the way. That's not just in America. You'll be tested in the mall. You'll be tested when you go out and hang out. I know. I know. Who told you? I, I, don't worry about it. I, I have big ears, alhamdulillah. You, you will be tested with this. And it's, sometimes it's not going to be easy, especially for the young people here. It's not going to be easy. Maybe you have friends on your phone, man. Your parents don't know about it. You got a secret. You got another profile on Facebook. You're just updating it right now. And you have to unfriend all of those girls. Yep, you do. You listening? You have to unfriend them. And don't call them back. And don't text them back. And when they say, what happened? You don't like me anymore. You don't even say, no, 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 no. It's not you. It's just Islam. No, don't do that. Don't even talk back. Just leave it. Drop it. End of story. No more. Girls, if you're up to this, stop it. You stop yourselves. You know, you, this is not something your parents will come and control. You, when you are teenagers, and you have hormones, and you reach the age of puberty, and you're attracted to the opposite gender, that means in Islam, you are adults, and you have to make your own responsible decisions. Your parents are no longer responsible for your Islam. You are responsible. If you are 14 years old, 15 years old, even 13 years old, and you die today, then Allah will not say, minor, go easy on him. You are treated as an adult in our deen. This religion makes you an adult early. The moment you start feeling a little funny about the other gender, you're an adult. You will be tried by Allah like a 50-year-old, like a 30-year-old. You're the same as them. Hold yourself to a higher standard. Don't think of yourself as just a kid. You are an adult. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَى أَثَامًا Whoever did that, He's, he's, gonna, he's earned, he's come to contact with a great sin. How can a Muslim do this? How can a Muslim do shit? How can a Muslim kill someone? How can a Muslim commit zina? How can they do that? يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The punishment will be doubled for those people. The, pa the passage began, these are special people to me. And now Allah says, these kaba'ir, these three things, shirk, murder, and zina, adultery, illegitimate relations, these three things, if a Muslim does it, anybody else does it, they will get punished. A Muslim does it, I'll punish him double. He knew it and he still did it. The mushrik, at least he didn't know and he did it. The Muslim knew it and he still did it. On judgment day, on resurrection day, the punishment is doubled for him. And he will remain in that punishment humiliated. He will constantly be humiliated. Because shirk and killing a person and zina are humiliating crimes. They take away the dignity of a human being. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla is extremely angry at these people. Then you're like, maybe somebody sitting in this audience that's made some mistakes in their life. Don't raise your hand. Only Allah knows your mistakes. I don't want to know. And you shouldn't tell people. It's between you and Allah. Maybe you've made some big mistakes in your life. What about you? You hear these ayahs, are like, oh my God, double punishment. Maybe I should leave the masjid right now because that's pretty depressing. And then shaitan comes to those kinds of people. You know what shaitan says to them? Man, you going to hell anyway. Might as well party it up. 
you know, what are you doing in the masjid anymore? You're, you're already on the express train, just go all the way, man. You know, you're already a goner. What does Allah say about these people? Illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan saliha. The exception is people who did shirk, people who did murder, people who did zina. But the exception is even if you did these things, these three things or all of these things, if you turn back to Allah and you became a believer again, it's like you came, became a new Muslim, you came into Islam all over again. And this time, وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And he was very serious about doing good things from now on. It's not just عَمِلَ صَالِحًا يَقُولَ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا نُسَمِّي هَذَا الْمَفْعُولَ الْمُطْلَقَ This is called the absolute additive. It's added to the verb to emphasize it over anything else. What that means in simple English is, this person came back, to, returned back to Allah, fixed their faith, and then after fixing their faith, this time they take their actions very seriously. They take their actions very, very seriously. They are really keen on doing good deeds. If you can become that person, even if you've done some terrible things in your life, then those people, Allah will take all of their sins and convert them into good deeds. He will not just get rid of your sins. We want Allah to get rid of our sins. Maybe your sins are the size of a mountain. I don't want to see that mountain on Judgment Day. Allah will not get rid of the mountain. Allah will turn the mountain into a mountain of good deeds, if you can make tawbah. This is Ar-Rahman. Allah is telling us the people that are furthest from Allah. You know the Rasul ﷺ told us, لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن The one who commits zina is not a Muslim, not a believer at the time he's doing zina. He's not a believer. The people furthest from Allah, the people who lost their iman. The people who do shirk, the people who kill another person, an innocent person, the people who commit zina, they're furthest from Allah. And Allah says, even if they are so far away from me, they turn back towards me, I will forget all of their crimes, and I will convert their crimes into good deeds for them on Judgment Day. SubhanAllah. I will make them Ibadul Rahman to me, because they came back. They were so far away and they still came back to me. That's what Allah wants. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah has always been extremely forgiving, always loving. Now somebody, shaitan comes to them as they're listening to this dars, and shaitan comes to them and says, Hey look, if you do a really bad sin, and then you make tawbah, you can take the mountain of bad deed and turn it into a mountain of good deed. So why don't we just go out there and do some really bad stuff, and then make tawbah? Because man, that's the easiest way to get a huge pile of good deeds. <laughs> And somebody else is thinking, sitting there, man, these people were so messed up. And they made tawbah. And Allah gave them so much. But I didn't, I'm not that bad. I just missed a couple of salahs. I got angry at my mom once. You know, I talked back to my husband. And I said some mean things to my sister. And you know, I, I talked back to my father, my mother, etc. I have some issues. I've done some bad things, but it's not that bad. I didn't kill anyone. I didn't do zina. So is my tawbah any good? I mean their tawbah is, they did big things and they made tawbah, is, but my tawbah is for smaller things. So does it count? Is it any good? Allah says in the next ayah, وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا Anybody else who makes tawbah and does any good deeds, فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ That's a pretty good tawbah too. He's also coming back to Allah with a very serious tawbah. In other words, you don't say, man, I haven't been really bad. So my tawbah is not as good as the guy who's you know, he was a gangster, he like killed 20 people and then he became a Muslim and then he made tawbah. No, 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 no. Whatever sins you've made, whatever sins you've made, remember one thing about sins. If they are a, if they are no big deal to you, if your sins are no big deal to you, then they are a big deal to Allah. And when your sins are a big deal to you, they're a big problem for you, then they are a small problem for Allah. Allah will forgive them easily if you care a lot about your mistakes. If you don't care about your mistakes, it could be a small mistake, but it will be very big on judgment day. Because you didn't care. Caring comes in the heart. Allah Azza wa Jalla judges what is in our hearts, our attitudes. 